Hi, and welcome to another Q&A with Bob and Fran. We are your healthy aging lifestyle coaches and authors. Many of you have written to us and we gathered together a bunch of questions that we thought we would answer now. So stay with us to the end because we have a surprise one at the very end for you to hear. So let's get started now. Okay, so I'm gonna read the first one. It says, hi, love you both. <laughs> so nice. And just wondering, do you ever argue? And if so, what about? Well, I don't think we argue very much, but when we argue, it's mostly about driving directions. Remember the old days when we didn't have um, any directions in the car? GPS. Yeah, yeah GPS or different uh, Garmin or whatever they were at the beginning. We lived in Chicago and we were getting on the highway heading to Indiana, but Bob listened to me and we wound up heading to Wisconsin. Yeah. So yeah, that was our biggest argument. <laughs> well, with the GPS on the newer cars. Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> it's it saved our marriage. So I hope and that, a lot of gas. <laughs> I hope that answered your question, but we don't argue very much. <laughs> the next question. I'm so happy I found you two on YouTube. What is a typical morning like for you? So, Bob, do you want to explain a typical morning? Yeah, well, I can tell you what we did today. <laughs> So we get up about six o'clock and uh, we decided to go for a hike today. There's uh, Carl Sandberg uh, National Park nearby. And so uh, we did a, a walk up, uh, sort of a hike up one of the mountains there. And that took about, I'd say an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half. It's not that long. But it's a good workout, and we use that mountain sort of as our treadmill in the morning. Uh, we began, by the way, we did first did uh, some stretching and uh, loosened up a bit. Then we did the hike, and we came back, and uh, we sort of quieted down and uh, did a little meditation for about uh, 10 minutes or so, kind of uh, just sort of refresh us and get us settled. And then uh, we had a healthy breakfast. Uh, Fran made her famous granola with uh, raisins and we put a lot of fresh fruit on there, berries and bananas, it was fantastic. And uh, of course we make time to shower and clean up a bit. And uh, then we started videoing this uh, <laughs> this particular uh, show. So that's what our mornings look like. We sort of have this uh, hour of power. Uh, we've stretched it to a couple hours because we're not working and we can do that. But we think that you should get up and get out if you can. And uh, that's what we did today. And that's pretty typical for our morning um, re regimen. Next question is, Bob, what's your favorite dish that Fran cooks? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I like about everything Fran cooks, but I think my favorite, I will say, is a Thai dish. I love Thai noodles, and Fran makes a dish called drunken noodles. It's uh, very popular in uh, northern Thailand, and it's a uh, wide noodle, spicy and loaded with fresh vegetables, and I love it. And I think that recipe is on our website at bobnfran.com. She's got a lot of good recipes on there, but that's one of my favorites. Most anything Asian, I love. I love the Italian dishes as well. I can keep going and going. <laughs> but drunken noodles, that's the answer for today. Okay. Give it a try, by the way. It's like easy to do, I guess and tastes delicious. This is a, an interesting question. Dear Bob and Fran, I get depressed with all the toxicity in the world today. How can I get out of this funk? Well, I think the first thing you have to keep in mind is that you really can't change other people that affect you. Uh, whether you know them or they're 
on TV or their politicians or from foreign countries, whatever is type of person is upsetting you. You just have to understand that you can only change yourself. So with that in mind, I, I think that you have to become your very best self. You, you have to be the change in the world that you want to see. You have to be a living example of that. And uh, that would be my advice to you. Once you work on yourself, I think that, uh, and understand that you can't change a lot of things that are going on, you can't change any person. I think uh, that will help you understand what's going on, the reality of what's going on, and uh, it won't bother you as much. So and, you can, and you can turn off the news. Yes. Watch less news. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good <laughs> yeah. idea. Another, another factor in this is that sometimes when people on a personal level, I think, treat you badly or you see them treating someone else badly and their behavior is just not aligned with yours. Uh, we look at people like that that uh, are sort of toxic in our mind as our teachers, as well as the teachers that we love and we've learned from over the years. Even these negative personalities can be, it's a lesson in not and how, how not, not to be. be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we look at them as teachers. I'll read the next one. Okay. It says, wow, this is a sort of a long one. I know you advise a meditation practice, but I don't seem to be able to sit for 20 seconds before my mind starts jumping around. Any advice? <laughs> well, well I, you're not alone, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. We call that the monkey mind. And sometimes it's makes no sense, all these thoughts that come into play. But I think that you should sort of make a specific commitment in terms of time and place. So you say, let's say at 8.30 every morning, I'm going to sit quietly in this place with no electronics, no phones or computers around. And I'm just going to sit and focus on my breath. Your breath you take with you everywhere. So you can do this everywhere. So I would sit quietly and I would shoot for just a, maybe a couple of minutes to start with. And if your mind wanders off. And it this, will. Yeah, it will. It will. <laughs> just refocus back on the breath. Try to feel the breath going in and out of your nostrils. And focus hard on that. Try to lock in on that. And again, mind wanders somewhere. Just bring it back to the breath. And another thing that we personally do once in a while is to uh, get a guided meditation. So we sit quietly. And it could be just for 10 or 15 minutes. But uh, there are so many of them online. We like the ones that are... Uh, I think produced by something called Calm, C-A-L-M. They're YouTube videos. They're really good. And you close your eyes and just follow the guided meditation. It's a great way to, uh, to get into that as a daily habit. What's the next question? Then? I love the next question. You two are so cute together. It was a love at first sight. Wow. It was for me. <laughs> I saw her across a crowded room and I said, that's the one. <laughs> it literally was across a crowded room. We were during orientation week, our freshman year in college at Indiana University. In the old days when women had to be in at a certain time, yeah. we had hours. Um, and a, the lobby was packed with people. It was a Wednesday, I remember. And it was like a date night. So everybody was out. And I saw, I was with a guy and he was with a girl. And I saw him and I asked my date who he was. And at the same time, he asked his date who I was. Yeah. And then I called her very probably the next day. Yeah. And made a date for that Saturday night. Yeah. So yeah. I was so excited that I couldn't even eat dinner. I couldn't, you know, it was like smitten. So he picks <laughs> me up. Smitten. <laughs> and 
we go outside and I remember I asked him where the car was and he says, I don't have a car. I didn't own a car at that time. <laughs> I mean, I was only a freshman in yeah. college, but. Uh, and uh, I remember so we start walking we across, across campus. campus to a street dance and we got there a little early. And by the time we got there, I was really not, not, impressed. Too, <laughs> not too impressed and I got really hungry. So before the dance, we went to this local um, restaurant, little yeah. Yeah. cafeteria type well, place. I, I, I suggested we go there. For a sort Coke. Of a, yeah. And I said, let's have a Coke. But and, like I said, I'd gotten really hungry. So we get to the restaurant and I order a Coke and then Fran I orders. Now listen to this. Now you really understand we're whole food plant based now. Yeah. I ordered a ham sandwich <laughs> with French fries and a Coke or a chocolate milkshake. Yeah. Bob didn't have enough money <laughs> to pay. Yeah. So we had to ask a friend who was in the restaurant. I mean, I was money. working, I got a job as a dishwasher <laughs> at, at a fraternity house that, and I didn't have any money. And I, I did see someone and, yeah. and I borrowed, borrowed money. It. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget, she ordered extra, she ordered tomato <laughs> on that ham sandwich. And that was 10 cents more. Yeah. It stuck with me here for, it so it was, 60 it, years. it wasn't a good beginning. But, no. um, the rest of the evening went better. And by the time we got back to my dorm at 11 mm -hmm. o'clock hours, I decided I'd give him another chance. Yeah. And so <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah. So we've been together now for, we've been married for 59 years. And we dated for four years yeah. before that. Yeah. Add it up. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a great ride. We've had a great life together. I don't eat ham sandwiches anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question says, I am in my 60s and want to start exercising more, but it's difficult for me to get outdoors at times. What is the best way to get started? We have the perfect answer. <laughs> it's chair exercises. We do them. And uh, we do them, whether we can get out or not. But we prefer to get out and walk briskly or climb a mountain like we did this morning. But uh, the chair exercises are great for aerobics and for building strength. You can do some with weight. We have these on our YouTube videos. So just search for them and uh, you, you can get started. They're easy to do. They take about uh, 10 minutes for each one. Uh, we have one with weights and one without weights. So you do them right from your chair, build strength, it builds endurance. And uh, it's a great way to, uh, to exercise when you cannot get outdoors. So I'd say give it a try. The next one says, I am 47 years old a bit overweight and wanting to improve my diet, but I can't get myself motivated to do so. Any ideas? Well, how about buying a motivation machine or something? <laughs> well, Remember, only you can motivate yourself. Understand that every bite of food you take either feeds illness or protects you from illness and overweight. Yeah, I, I, These are I, life choices that yeah. you make. You know, what you eat now is going to be how you look and how you feel. So we advocate a plant-rich diet. Most of you know that, that we eat only whole foods and, and, and plant-based foods. But if you can start in that direction, that's what I would do. And even if you're not 100%, give it a try. Cut back. Reduce all meat and dairy products and processed foods. Try that for 45 days. Then see how you feel and how you look. And, and what your scale says. Yeah. And I, I, I'm willing to bet that you're going to stick to it. Just give it a try. So... The next question we've gotten so often. Well, let me read it. Go ahead. You can answer okay. it because it's to you. Yeah. It says, Fran says she cooks with no oil. 
Why does she do this? And what does she use instead of oil? These are cooking oils, I guess. Right. So how would you answer? Why, why do you do this? Okay, first of all, we thought we were eating really healthy. Neither one of us has ever had a weight problem. So we didn't give much thought to the calories in um, olive oil that I was using quite frequently. Um, then a few years ago, we were fortunate to have a whole food plant-based doctor move to our area and we switched to him. And the first thing he did on our first visit was assign a reading to us to read the book by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Reverse and Prevent Heart Disease. Mm -hmm. Neither one of us had heart disease or a weight problem, but I read the book and I was shocked to learn that olive oil, even though it's in the Mediterranean diet, they say how healthy it is, is actually the densest form of calories with the least amount of nutritional value. So we cut out the oil and without reducing the amount of food we eat, even sometimes eat more than we used to, we both lost 10 pounds and have kept it off without trying simply because we're not eating that high calorie dense food. So what do you do in place very, of oil? Very easy. I, I have this water bottle that I keep next to the sink stove when I'm cooking. And I'll just pour a little water in when I'm sauteing onions and mushrooms. Or if I have some veggie broth handy, I'll just put a little bit of that in. Either one works perfect. And it doesn't change the flavor in the, the, of the finished product. And the amount of calories we've cut out without losing anything, any flavor, is amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Plus, of course, we've done something really healthy for our hearts. Yeah, I agree. So the next question is, what prompted you beautiful people <laughs> what can I say, to start a YouTube channel? Well, I, I can answer that one. When the COVID vaccine came in. COVID. I mean, the COVID. Uh, <laughs> Before the vaccine. The yeah. COVID virus came in, sorry. Uh, it sort of stymied all our volunteering activities. Now, we've been retired for a long time, and uh, we've devoted our time mostly to volunteering and helping other people. So this all stopped. We couldn't interact with people. And so uh, uh, we, we kind of wondered, how can we continue to help people uh, maybe from our home, maybe on the internet. And then we thought of YouTube. And then I got into it. I uh, challenged myself. It was a high learning curve for me. I didn't know anything about YouTube, but I figured out how to get on YouTube, how to make a video. They're not, we don't do a very good job at this. We're very simple in our approach. We don't have fancy cameras or lighting or, or stuff, but this is the way we are and it's a natural presentation. And so it kept my mind very sharp and kept us going. And now we're, uh, we have thousands of viewers. We have made friends with our viewers <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> and in like 40, more than 40 countries around the world. So it's been very gratifying and that's our story on how we got the YouTube <laughs> channel started. I'll read the next question. Uh, uh, curious Bob and Fran as to what you do or what you believe is the most meaningful thing one can do in life. Well, it kind of ties in with what we were doing. Yeah. We, we think that uh, this sounds like it's hard to do, but it's really easy. And that is serving other people, serving other people and spreading loving kindness with your words and with your deeds. One thing I wanted to say is that when you help other people, 
you actually benefit more than they do. And that may sound weird, but for example, we deliver Meals on Wheels to homebound seniors here in our town. And when we're done, we feel so good that we did it. I mean, it really makes you feel like you've made somebody's day by bringing a little food and conversation to people who ordinarily don't have any uh, contact with the outside world. Yeah. So this idea of serving others and spreading love and kindness not only helps those that you were tending to, but it really helps you personally as well, or right. has for us tremendously. So the next question, Bob and Fran, I need your advice. What would be your top tips for controlling weight? Well, I would suggest you get your pen and paper and write this out because I'm sure Fran has a few ideas. Uh, what, what are some of them, Fran? Okay. In, in addition to cutting out the oil, which is major, if you want to lose weight, I advise you to weigh yourself every morning when you first get up. Mm -hmm. Now, this may sound silly, but if you do this and you start to see the numbers go up, you can catch yourself right away. Whereas if you wait a long time, it, it might be too hard to lose the weight if, it, you know, if you didn't know that you were gaining. Another thing that we suggest is that you eat until you're just 80% full. Now that sounds really weird, I know, but this happens to be a Japanese thing that uh, we learned about. Some people eat until they're 80, till they're full and other people eat till they're not hungry anymore. And those are two different things. Yeah. If you eat, let's say you take one serving of something and you eat, wait five minutes before thinking of taking a second helping because your brain has to catch up to your stomach or your stomach has to catch up to your brain so that you will know if you wait those five minutes or so, you will suddenly not be hungry anymore. Another thing is that we advocate strongly that you exercise every day. It could be walking briskly outdoors for 30 minutes or so. It could be these chair exercises that we spoke about. But you have to combine diet with exercise. Believe it or not, sitting is now considered the new smoking. So many people, as they get older, don't keep moving, and it's really unhealthy. So do something physical every day. Another thing, you, another thing that you may want to try is to eat your main meal at lunch instead of dinner. This gives your body more time to work off the calories because if you eat a big meal at night and then you go to bed um, soon after, you haven't had a chance to work off those calories. Another thing that we do is that we do a weekly cleanse where we just eat fruit and vegetables three times at three, three meals, just fruit and vegetables and no grains. Give it a try. It's like amazing. Now that's not as as bad as it sounds because like you can have like for breakfast a bowl of fruit with some uh, almonds. At lunch you could have a bowl of soup or a big salad. And at dinner you could have um, a soup or something, but just no grains on that one day. Yeah, that, that will definitely help you lose weight. Another thing that we talk about is eliminating what we call SOS. Salt, oil, and sugar. Period. Yeah. And uh, if you eat out at all, you know that restaurants specialize in SOS because it gives their food more flavor, but it gives you more calories. And of course, we er encourage you uh, in order to lose this weight or control weight, is to reduce or avoid all meat, dairy, and processed foods. Another tip is to drink a glass of water about a half hour before each meal, not with the meal, but before the meal, because this will tend to give you a feeling of fullness and you will tend to eat mm -hmm. less. 
And one last, last thing I, I might mention, I think it would help in the weight loss. Every morning, the first thing that we, well, actually, the second thing that we do <laughs> after we get up is to have a glass of, uh, about an eight ounce glass of water with uh, juice of a freshly squeezed lemon. That helps flush you out. And uh, uh, we think that it might be something for you to try. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, it says, how did you get interested in fighting child trafficking? And that's a really good question. Um, I don't know how you heard about that, but we're, we are into that. It started when we started traveling to Thailand, which we did over a nine-year period. And uh, while we love Thailand, we love the Thai culture, we love the people especially, there is a dark side, as there is to every country, and that is the idea of trafficking, of illegal trafficking of young uh, people, of, of young children. Most, mostly children, girls, mostly but girls. boys too. These people primarily, these youngsters are trafficked into the sex trade, and uh, it was awful. We started seeing it when we learned about something called uh, sex tourism, where people, men, would come from different countries, including the US, we've seen them from Korea, and all, all different countries. They'd come with their golf clubs, they'd play golf in the, in, the, in the daytime, and they would want young girls, especially virgin girls, in the nighttime. And it made us actually sick, sick to our stomach. We would walk in certain areas where we were located and uh, streets uh, were full of bars and all these young girls who were really dressed as older people, older women, but they were not. They were young and immature and very vulnerable. So we got into it. We think the answer is to not just try to pull them out of brothels. We've tried that and they return the next day, but to provide education for them and medical supplies for them in these poor villages where they uh, grow up. This way they could get a job and not have to be uh, the, um, you know, the whim of these sex uh, traffickers. Yeah, they would be more independent and less vulnerable, them and their families. So let's move on. Uh, by the way, our, our book that we wrote and hope that people consider buying all the proceeds from our book sales, and the book is about healthy aging, all the proceeds go to counter this uh, illicit trafficking of young people, young kids. So uh, we're moving along. The two of you have convinced me to switch to a whole food plant-based diet. So what is the most important factor in doing so? I have an answer for that, actually. I, I think the answer is that you must Make a commitment and you must stick to it. It's all about action. So you can talk about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to do it eventually. I see uh, some friend has done it and she's lost 30 pounds and looks great. But all that talk, I don't know. It's just talk. <laughs> yeah. So we say, you know, do your research. Uh, Look at other people. Look at us. We've, we're in our 80s. We feel like we're in our 40s. And uh, you can do that too. But you have to commit to it. And then you have to stick to it. Stick to it. <laughs> it's not hard because there's so many wonderful foods out there now. So many wonderful recipes. You never go hungry and never lack interesting foods to eat. Okay, so this question is for you. It says, Fran, what are some clothing brands that you personally prefer? That's kind of funny because I am not a shopper and I'm not into brands and I've never bought expensive things. But one advantage to 
not gaining weight because I never outgrow any clothes. So I know that when we look back at some of our pictures from trips that we've taken many, many years ago, and I'm wearing the same things that I'm wearing today because I haven't outgrown them. But when I do buy anything, I lately I just buy from, uh, there's many resale shops that are run for chair, by different charities here in town. So I spend, oh, either two or three dollars per top. So I'm not a big spender and I'm not into name brands, okay. unless the name brand is in the two dollar range. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you got me this shirt. It's like three bucks. Could be. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, next question, just a couple more. Uh, I love you guys and I love your book. And actually keep it on my nightstand and have given copies as gifts. Oh, nice. What prompted you to write the book? Well, Bob has to answer this because he's basically the writer. I'm more the editor. <laughs> yeah. I did the, this, uh, the book, I think it was on my bucket list. I wanted to write a book as part of my legacy. legacy. <laughs> okay. And I did that. It was just something I wanted to do. And I did it. It's basically a compilation of articles that we've written over the years. And it's a way to help people. And uh, I'm glad I did it. And it enabled us to you know, put our philosophy of life on paper so people, we could share it with people. And uh, it's been uh, very gratifying the number of people that have purchased the book and have made such nice comments about it to us. Plus, of course, all the proceeds going to help child trafficking. Yeah. And now that final question, I see from your biography that you have traveled worldwide. What have been your favorite country destinations? Oh, guys. Well, <laughs> I think there's maybe some different categories, but I think for adventure, I think Russia. Which was the Soviet Union back in 1986, I think it was. 87. Russia for adventure. We were followed everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. By but left alone because yeah. that was during Perestroika. So we were allowed to do the things we were doing, but cautiously. <laughs> yeah. So these guys in black suits, everywhere we went, they showed up. But they kept their distance. Another country that was very adventurous was <laughs> Burma. Which where, is now Myanmar. Where we were followed everywhere except they didn't wear suits. <laughs> uh, but that was very uh, intriguing and different country. And uh, we, uh, we have unbelievable memories from our, our trips to uh, Burma. Actually there, it was safer to walk on the street than in the, on the sidewalks because the infrastructure was so bad that there were holes on the sidewalks so big that if you fell on, into one, you'd never <laughs> get out. Never get out. So, uh, Italy and I would say Thailand would be <laughs> the best for food. Especially Thailand. And then I think maybe for spirituality, Thailand again, yeah. it was a very spiritual place. But yeah. our trips to Israel were very also moving. very, yeah. very spiritual in nature. The one thing that we have found in our travels is that in every country we have been to, we found the people to be extremely friendly and gracious. And we have memories that are just very, very profound. So we hope you enjoyed this Q and A. And if you, if you did, uh, let us know in the comment section, maybe we could do another one a few months down the road. And of course, we appreciate your, your loyalty and you're being a part of this healthy aging community. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. soon. Bye for Bye now. Bye for now.